really from a little boy, I felt the call to come to America. We came here December 1987. Three children, five, three, seven months, landed with $300 because we felt God call us here as missionaries to America. We found ourselves crying out to God that God would come and move. That led us for what happened in April of 1989 when revival broke out in upstate New York. We didn't realize that what took place that week would begin to pick up momentum throughout 89, 90, go back to Southern Africa for three months, see it hit our country, 91, 92, and then what would take place in Central Florida in 93, Lakeland, Carpenter's home church, an explosion that in six weeks of 100,000 people came through the doors. That would then catapult us across America and then to the nations of the world. What I begin to see the Lord begin to do is almost like send us on a mission. The whole of Australia shaken in the 95 period. South Africa shaken. England right across Europe. Germany. Philippines. Singapore. What was so amazing is just to watch one place catch fire, then the demand comes for you to go to another place, and then you go there. It was actually in one of our biggest meetings in Singapore in 95. And that's when God spoke to us about the River Church. We started first day of December 1996. 575 people showed up. That led to the opening of the River Bible Institute the following year, which now is over 4,000 people have graduated. What, in essence, the Lord allowed us to do from 96 until the present was to raise up an army of people that would go do what we do without us doing it. I remember the early part of 98, we were in Ozark, Alabama, and went to sleep. And in this dream, I was standing looking over New York City. And standing next to me was Dr. Billy Graham. He had had one of the great revivals in New York City, Madison Square Garden back in the 50s. I was standing there and he was talking to me about it in the dream. I began to weep uncontrollably got out of bed and I knew exactly what that meant. I heard the Lord say, go to New York City and launch one of the biggest soul winning crusades since the 50s. One thing led to another. We went and negotiated on Madison Square Garden, rented it for six weeks in the summer of 99 in an event that would cost $6.7 million, trained up the harvesters, gospel soul winning script was birthed, we saw 48,459 people give their lives to the Lord. Everything we're doing today was kind of birthed there. The message that was preached on the 30th of July, 99, that there was a storm coming, talking about the rise of terrorism, nations from the downfall of America to speak. America's not ready for what's coming. What would happen if a missile landed in the middle of New York City? Two years before 9-11. I can promise you on the day of 9-11, I had a sense of relief, which I know that sounds crazy, but I remember standing up the Sunday after 9-11, and I said to everybody, had we not obeyed, I would have resigned the ministry today, because I would not even be considered fit to even be in the ministry, that we obeyed God and we did what God told us to do. The comfort is knowing that you are doing exactly what God wants you to do. There's nothing greater than just obeying the Lord. Whether in the eyes of man, it matters not, but obey Him. So 99 was New York. 
2000 was Shreveport. 2001, God gave us our world headquarters here, 83 acres of property. In the end of 2002 was a very uh, major, major thing for us because our middle daughter Kelly, uh, she died in my arms on Christmas Day. She battled for 18 years with genetic disease called cystic fibrosis. On Christmas Day, here you are holding your daughter in your arms and she's dying in your arms and it was just past her 18th birthday. As a minister, I had to make a decision what the devil walked in the air and stole my daughter from me or I'm going to put her on the altar. I just, in my heart, felt I'm going to give the Lord my best gift today, Christmas Day. But I make a vow that the devil will pay a hundred million souls and a billion dollars into world missions. It's amazing how these things happen but I know that God hears the cry and honors the vow. So when you make a vow for 100 million souls, you have to go get the souls. Where do you go to get the souls? Africa. So we went to Soweto. Went from there to Mlazi, then to Mamalodi, then to Mdalsani. And we were doing one every six months. I'm looking at this field, the whole place was dance. People were just happy. We were going to roll right through Africa and get this hundred million souls. It was in that fourth meeting where the Lord said to me, America. I felt the Lord say, don't go rent stadiums like you did before, just use churches. We went to 55 cities in 27 months from 2007 through the early part of 2009 and saw 1.1 million people saved. 2011, Christian Television Network opened to us six hours every night, seven nights a week, just through television alone, 120,000 phone calls, 1.1 million people saved. By 2013, America had already gone through the financial collapse of 08. I didn't even know if we even had a window to turn this thing around. I said, Lord, what do we even do? You know, it's this thing too far gone. And I felt the Lord say, go to Washington, D.C. We went to D.C. in the summer of 2014, rented Constitution Hall for 14 nights and issued a restraining order. So tonight in the name of Jesus, and by the power of the name of Jesus, I come against the structure that is holding our nation in captivity right now. I bind it and I render it powerless and ineffective in the name of Jesus from the Supreme Court to the White House to the executive branch to the Congress and the Senate. I execute a restraining order against you right now by the power of the blood of Jesus. You stop in your maneuver against this land. In 2015, we went back again, 2016, 2017, and 2018, right in the Capitol. We walked every office of the Congress, every office of the Senate, we served over 56,000 people saved. So here we are, our my world headquarters. This is a place of, of launching. It's a, a place of raising up revivalists for the 21st century. They're gonna go from here and go out and light fires in the nation of the earth. It's also a place where people come from other nations and get ignited. And then it's a place of broadcasting where 
literally thousands of people watching a live stream. I feel what God put together here is, is a launching pad to carry revival to the nation of the earth. When the Lord gave us 83 acres, I felt that we wouldn't build till we had definite. And of course, that has taken place here the last couple of years. We felt the Lord tell us, build as though money was no object. We're not gonna borrow from the banks. We're basically gonna dig a ditch and watch God fill it, and really just see the word of God work. What has resulted is, is the plans for the full 83 acres, which is gonna be the new sanctuary that'll seat about 4,300. Everything from the new children's church, youth facility, television studios, everything related to the church, bank, restaurants, the hotel, the chapel, and then all of the other things that will come about on the property which will unfold as we build. So let's see what the Lord is going to do. This is an adventure that will be as much an adventure for us as it will be for everybody else. In the 1700s, America had what was known as the First Great Awakening. That First Awakening shook America. A hundred years later, they had the Second Great Awakening. What we believe in God for is a Third Great Spiritual Awakening. The first two awakenings actually affected the culture. There have been revivals over the last hundred years, but has not affected the culture of America. An awakening affects everything, from the houses of government to every house. And that's what we believe in God for, another great spiritual awakening.